a project from Hungary, and it's called SK. A warm welcome to Laszlo and Gabor. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Gabor Sipos, uh, producer uh, from Hungary. Uh, we have started to work on this project with Laszlo uh, one and a half years ago. Uh, this project is called SK. Um, this has a double meaning, this abbreviation. It's first of all the name of the main character of our film, Saul Kominsky. And the second meaning is the Zonderkommando, which um, for those who might not know, it was a um, group of uh, J Jewish prisoners uh, in Auschwitz forced to assist the Nazi soldiers uh, for executing uh, their uh, people, their relatives. And, um, and this is our story about. And um, I'm presenting you Laszlo Nemes, uh, who is the co-writer and director of this film, who had already a short film a couple of years ago, titled With a Little Patience. And uh, that had a very similar topic. So I think it was a good rehearsal for this debut film. Which Hello. Um, our story, our story takes place um, over the course of two days, um, and uh, it deals with uh, our main character, who uh, Saul Kaminsky, who, uh, who works in the crematorium uh, in Auschwitz. Uh, his his job is to to burn the bodies of his own people. And uh, one day he finds uh, the body of, uh, of a boy and he thinks that it's his son. And from that moment on, uh, he tries to, uh, he tries to uh, save the body from being burned and, uh, and find a way to bury it. And even though he's not a religious person, he doesn't know anything about religion really, he tries to find a rabbi uh, among the prisoners to help him bury it. And as he focuses more and more on this impossible deed, uh, he turns away progressively uh, from the other members of the commando who are trying to organize a rebellion uh, as they are uh, to be liquidated at any time. And he does that to save the remains of a child that he didn't take care of when he was still alive. So basically, uh, that's his straightforward simple story uh, I, I also think that this allows us to have a, a radical approach when it comes to uh, directing and so this is something that I've been experimenting with in my short films and I want to uh, uh, to try and, and uh, bring to another level uh, uh, this approach how, you rem how we want to create a very intimate relationship with the main character, how we, um, how we stay with him throughout the film and, uh, and stick to him uh, physically. And it's as, it, as if we were accompanying him uh, during this, uh, uh, this day. And so, uh, as we do, do that, we uh, a lot of the surroundings and um, and the elements that otherwise in another film would have would be shown, we uh, we do not show them. We use um, off-screen space and uh, uh, um, out-of-focus elements and background and sound uh, in order to to uh, to recreate the world, but not necessarily with images only, but also uh, more importantly. Uh, within the mind of the spectator, uh, recreate the things that he we, we wouldn't be able to represent, the places of the horror, but also, but also because we know that we cannot show everything, and we shouldn't show everything. Uh, so uh, I think this is an, uh, an approach that can um, uh, get get can get closer to sort of human perception. 
uh, in a very di very dynamic uh, fashion. It's a very mobile camera, um, and uh, in color. It's I don't see it as a black and white film, uh, but in, in very sub subdued uh, fashion, and in um, uh, I see it as a raw film in a sense, and um, and when I uh, I w when I been working with this material at the at the start I thought that this would be only a, a journey uh, through darkness and uh, only telling a tale of not of survival but of of uh, of the dead but as I came uh, I came to realize that uh, that more importantly uh, I I've, I've been attracted to what uh, what the main character goes through also that's when you have no reason to believe there's no hope. Uh, there's there's a faint voice within. There might be a faint faint voice within. That's for me uh, a way of being human. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, when I read the script, uh, it's very clear the oppressive emotional uh, atmosphere that is there, the claustrophobia. And I wanted to ask about what you refer to finding those moments of light, which uh, weren't really there for me too much in the reading of the script. But I agree, it needs them very much. And I wonder how you will find those, or perhaps even specifically where you would start to look to insert them. The moments of, of relief. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we, we've been we've been trying to work on it with Kobe and uh, my co-writer uh, to uh, specifically uh, enhance some of the characters uh, who can who can bring in some other uh, li more lightened uh, uh, more lightened moments. So I, I'm specific. I, I'm aware uh, of that, and I, I'm working on. We're working on on in this aspect. Why you start with the child and uh, for something like this? It, it's a, I, I, I see it as a close-up on the child when we start as an introduction to this uh, world, but also to the to to the main character. Uh, we see him alive. We we are the last to see him alive, and in, in this sense, it creates you know all the uh, the importance. We understand the importance in the sense uh, of th of this being who is still alive. What he can, what he projects. I mean, the protagonist represent uh, pr projects onto this child, uh, not a li lifeless body, but uh, as a, hum a living human being. So that 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 was my my our choice of 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 making him alive. That was important for the script. That's what I'm, I, I I felt it that way. Can I ask you a little bit about the ending? Because that's where I think some light is starting, you know, in the, the moment that he sort of f uh, recognizes in this other child, um, he, he, in his confusion, I guess, that he has actually accomplished something. Is, is that the feeling? Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. The way I, I read the I, ending. I think I don't see it as an utter um, failure on his part. It's there's there are more other layers which can resonate in a much more uplifting way, and and one of one of it is yes, definitely a sort of living living being to whom we can still project something. Okay. About the ending, the, the film end with uh, with a revolt. Mm -hmm that uh, actually happened in Auschwitz. Yes. Uh, are you very close to the facts? Did you document yourself about what really happened? We've been uh, researching this for three years. Uh, the manuscripts of the Zonderkommando were the basis, the, 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 the manuscript that they were found and put into the earth by the members who were later killed, uh, that were the basis of the project. And then we've documented uh, ourselves uh, regarding the insurrection uh, itself, how, how it went. Obviously, we've been working on it extensively with the specialists here in Israel as well. Um, and uh, so that that uh, uh, we don't we didn't want to expose it, to, you know, as as it being the main focus of the film, but uh, in an indir indirect way. But we can certainly keep the historical uh, background as as authentic and uh, uh, and truthful for uh, as as possible. Okay, no other comments. So congratulations, it's done. <laughs>